Hello and welcome to Pro Modeler. I'm Philip Flory. For this particular build, we're going to be building the Eddard Lightning. Uh, now, this particular kit is actually a Rebox, like an Airfix kit, that's um, a few years old now, but I think it's probably to date um, one of Airfix's best uh, kits that they've ever done. For this particular one, being Eddard, you get all the Eddard goodies with it. So, in this case, it's a photo etch um, color fret for actually doing the cockpit area, instrument panels, details, things like that. Obviously, there's another photo etch fret that actually does things like wheel wells um, and any detailed areas, which really brings the kit to life. Also, you get a retin seat for the ejector seat and liven it all up. Um, so there's some great bits like that. We're going to actually be doing this in 111 squadrons um, marking, so it's going to be very shiny, and we're going to be using our clans on the build. Okay. So, so if we have a run through of basically what we get in the box, so as you might, first thing you'll notice if you're used to the Airfix one, it's a lot smaller. That's because the sprues have been sort of cut up. So actually, what we've got here is a nice uh, colour sprue. Now this one here, obviously you've got the instruments, panels, the backing, various plates and the harnesses, which is a very nice touch and be fantastic for detailing up the actual cockpit area itself. On the back here, get you out the flash, there we go, we've got the insides of the wheelbase, very noticeable as well because they're nice big empty holes and obviously we've got various components there for livening up the undercarriage and that's a really quite an important part of this one, as I say, because it's quite big, they're outriggers, they hang on the outside so you can have a look at them. So that's quite nice and obviously the other option is to go through a resin replacement set and do it like that. At the same time we've got these bits on the go, here we have the actual the seat itself, I won't unbag it because I tend to lose them. So there we go, a nice resin ejector seat and we've got some various um, little guys here um, which are, might be prone to breaking off but I think it'd be okay but they're little cockpit details as well so they're very nice. So we do like those. Now in the box itself what you actually get multiple sprues, a few little things I've already had off the sprue to be honest. Quite a bit of flash um, as you might be able to see running through these um, other areas um, down here but the thing is there's none actually on the parts themselves so that's quite a nice little touch. Two types of tail, obviously we've got the F6 which is the square type uh, versus the earlier one here. Um, normally on this part you would have both, as we have them here, both the actual main fuselage bits. There again, having a quick close up look at it here, we've actually got some very nice uh, engraved details on there. Um, and I must admit, nice riveting and everything else seems to be totally in proportion, and that's something we do like. As I say, it is an Airfix older kit, um, and to be honest, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, some more detailed parts as well, um, various parts of the engines, things like that. Little thing I've already done, we've also got um, the engine section done here. A uh, little thing I was having a play with earlier, and we've got some air intakes there, which are actually drying to speed us up a little bit. Main wings themselves, obviously quite big. Um, the only thing I do notice on these is quite a lot of scratching on the upper surfaces, so that's something we'll polish out, which I'll show you about doing later on, but um, it's quite a key thing, because otherwise that's going to show through, especially because we're doing a metal finish using um, our clads as we will be. It will be very, very noticeable. Um, so there's that. As you say, funny sprue layout, but that's because it's been cut off of, um, out of the other sprues to make them fit into a box. Undercarriage sections and flapper Um The cockpit, obviously the area details, things like that. As I say, the seat itself isn't that bad, um, but the resin one is a very, very nice touch, so we'll be using that one. Um, various other parts, as I say, that will be, some of them will be replacing um, with photo etch, um, other than, well, obviously we won't. Um, we've got our missiles down here, which actually make up to be lovely, lovely missiles and all the rest of it. Um, a refueling probe, which is a bit fiddly to get on, which we'll go through. Clear parts, unfortunately, they're not, uh, they were rattling around loose inside, which is something I don't like to see, but we'll take care of that. Um, little orange thing here is actually a masking set, so it's all pre cut die masks for actually putting this up, so we won't have to do my normal way of doing it, as you might have seen, where I actually go round and uh, take care of it myself with a little bit of Tamiya tape. Instructions, as you imagine, if you've ever seen um, Eddard ones, just the same. Obviously, it has the call out for their photo etch parts by PE numbers um, as you go along, so you know, usual thing like that. Um, we've also got down here in the box, uh, which is a nice colour. Uh, full colour sheet um, that gives you this obviously for your options. Um, for this particular one we'll be doing it with this one here which is 111 which is a personal favourite of mine, love that lightning mark, um, like that but otherwise um, other ones you've got down here you've got the Firebirds Aerobatic Team which is obviously the red one down here um, and obviously you've got 92 Squadrons which is uh, quite a popular one as well with the blue fin coming a bit more up to date uh, when they started to get the camo going over with the drabby look um, that's 19 squadrons which there again is another nice one as well so if you wanted to build your own little fleet you've got the decals for doing them all and as you'd expect um, lovely 
all in register as far as I can tell. I can't see any blemishes or anything else with the registers. Uh, the only thing you do get, it looks like, is a small little afterthought. Perhaps somebody forgot to pop it on, or it's the wrong type, which I do believe it's the wrong type. It's for the B up here, number 15. It's a correction because it's got a white background to it, um, and obviously doesn't need that. And the same goes with the D. Um, it's obviously fully printed white instead of just being cut out like it. So at least they've noticed the problem and fixed it before you've got to it. So that's always a good sign with any kit. So there we go. That's a basic run through of the parts. What we do, we get ourselves all squared away and get okay, ready. So we've got some of the bits out. What we've actually got here is the ejector seat. Now the thing with the ejector seat is obviously it comes with a little plug on the bottom which we need to remove. There's two ways of doing this. You can either leave it on for the moment and cut it off a little bit later or you can do what I do is basically chop it off now, clean it all up and that way when you do have to sand and that you don't get any sort of resin and filler dust around these areas. For that what we're going to use is basically like a little mini razor saw. Quite a handy one. This one is a little one. They obviously they do bigger ones, or you could just generally sand it off. This particular one, you've got two teeth. Um, the top one is uh, a lot sharper, um, a lot finer. Sorry, coarser. The bottom one is a lot finer. So what we're going to use, we're going to use the coarse one. We're just going to keep it flat. And what we'll do, we're just going to chop down, straight down, and let the blade do the work. Then obviously, because it's a, got a higher end and a lower end, you can chop through as you like. So there we go, we're halfway, we just turn over now and we just go down the, from the other side. Hopefully we'll meet in the middle. There we go, that's done. So what we do, we just carefully keep the plugs, because the resin plugs come in very, very handy. But we're just going to wipe away that resin dust. If it does build up, it can be a little bit of a problem. So what we've got then, we've obviously got the, the seat off, so we've just got quite a, a coarse sand uh, sanding file, so we're just going to sand off the bottom and make that nice and flat. Doesn't have to be totally perfect, but obviously we are looking for a very neat finish. So there we go, that was that one done. Then what we do, we're just going to grab a a pin vise that's got a little pin needle in there. This is a, a 0.5mm. Uh, so what we do is just going to drill a hole up into the actual main part. Don't go through the top of the seat. Um, obviously you want to go up through the bottom. And we're up like that. We just grab a cocktail stick. Okay, and we can just place that in there and use it as a holder. That way we can then paint it up and do all the work on it whilst holding it, which is quite a handy little thing. So at the same time, we're just going to clean the tub up as well. So we're just giving that a file. Got a little bit of flash here, so what we do, we just go run a knife down and chop off most of it. So we just clean that up. Like so. Now the other thing as well, obviously we've got the cockpit tub here. Now the thing with the cockpit tub is that we've got to cut out um, some various details so the photo etch parts on there can stick on there very nicely. So the easiest way to do that, if you take a knife just for the big stuff and just lightly run a blade over the top. Now we don't want to cut these back ones off because um, they're going to be covered up anyway. But all we're doing is just lightly trimming off the top part just like that and that gets rid of all the big bumps so then we can just come along with a, a medium type of file like this and we can just literally just give them a bit of a sand off just to flatten that down so when the photo which does come along it's going to fit on there very nicely so we just trim off a bit back here a bit of a raised area just like that so we just give this a bit of a, a sand down so it's all nice and flat and as I say, it'll just make it a nice snug fit. If you've got any raised areas, then it's going to be a bit of a, a pain to get it to fit in. So we just use one of my little thin files here. We can just sand them down. Take care of that quite easily, quite nicely. Now we've got to get rid of these three down the bottom, down on this side here as well. So same thing as well, we just get in there and sand them down. Because what we're doing, we're just making preparations for the paintwork. Because what we do, we'll paint this cockpit area first, and then obviously the colour photo etch parts will go on there very nicely. 
just use a finer grade. Just like so. Just use a finer sandpaper just to clean that last bit up. There we go, that's those done. So what we can do is we can actually place on um, some of the parts. So here we go, this is where it gets a bit confusing. Check your references with this. Obviously, if you're not using the Eddard set, you can be using anything else. But to just give you a quick run through, this one here, this is R2, um, which is quite important because I think it's part of the life support system, which is gonna actually go on the side uh, of the seat just here. So what we do is we will just carefully snip this off of its carrier. Um, I don't think it has any form at all, so it's going to be a straightforward cut just at the bottom. Then we're going to take some super glue, and my usual way of doing these things, I'll just get a bit of 40mm wide tape. Get that on the go. Okay, so we'll just stick that down over here on a big angle. Mm. Blob of super glue, nothing big. Okay, and then obviously with a cocktail stick, we just pick up a little bit of glue on there like that. And then what we do, we just bring it over. And as I say, it just make sure you're happy how it's going to go. And we're happy it's in there. So it's just a tiniest drop. Okay, and then this one is going to fit hopefully straight over the top. There we go, and that goes in there just like that, which is quite a, a nice way of doing it. Just let that dry a sec, you could use a bit of kicker or something else. Now there's lots of other little PE parts that go on there, but um, obviously they're coloured, so we're not gonna worry about those at all. The other one that goes on is one at the back, which is R3, which is a little tiny one. That's where this little bag of tricks comes in. Okay, so we just have R3. I'll just snip him off his carrier block and this little one is going to go just down the back and he is absolutely tiny so using as little glue as possible so we don't flood the area this one will go in as well so it's the larger part to the bottom and getting this on is somewhat tricky there we go, that one's on, so we just give them another drop of glue just down here at the back area. I'm more happy how that's standing without oh, getting glue all over you. What I'm going to do, just give this a quick cut uh, of the old kicker. we we'll just let that evaporate just to hold that in place. So I'm quite happy with the way that one is now. So what we can do, we can actually paint up this seat. There again, check your references because some of the call outs already I've noticed are a little bit off, such as the cockpit tub here. Um, it's calling out for this to actually be black. Well, it might have been for the early ones, but certainly the version we're doing of it, um, it's gonna be the same color as the actual paneling, which is a little bit off anyway. Um, it should be really sort of um, a sort of medium sea gray type of color. Um, looking at the actual um, colour ones that I've got, I'm going to be using Tamiya for a lot of these. Um, so we're going to have a choice probably between XF54 and 53. Um, if you're going to be doing it via the guns, then probably 335 is probably about right. But there again, it's one of those tricky things because what we're having to do is marry up with these. Um, and obviously when you look at the blue on that, um, it's quite a funny blue. So anyway, we'll sort that out when we get there. So we just let that bit dry a bit just happy like that now the other thing we can do we can look at is obviously the fuselage halves now we've got these fuselage halves to go and um, what we're going to do is clean them all up get rid of all the sprue marks and everything because what we can do is spray all these areas all at the same time for the cockpit and things like that so then we can get the color photo etch parts onto them and move along like that Okay, so you see, we've got it all sorted out here. Now, um, with the colour, as I say, it's very, very hard to get it right. So what I'm going to actually do is make a small little mix. So what we've actually got here is some XF53, um, which is the sort of neutral colour, neutral grey colour. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to put any thinners in, I'm going to make a little mix. So what I'm going to do is just going to add a touch of um, XF50 Field Blue to this, just to make it a little bit blue. Now, you could use any blue you like. 
So what we're going to do is going to pop a little bit, just a drop. the actual um, XF 53 and then we're just going to give it a touch 54 now I'm hoping and that's hoping what this will do let me use a brush to mix this it'll make it a better mix it will give us a bluey grey type colour see it's not as blue as I'd actually like to be honest it's a nice blue grey but it's not blue enough so what we'll do is, if we just put the holder here, we'll just add a touch of normal blue, something like a royal blue, um, a sort of flat blue, to make this a, a bit bluer. Obviously when you're dealing with blues and that, it will be a lot lighter. If we just use uh, a medium blue, it would be better than a flat blue. When you, yes, I say when you're actually painting um, and spraying, the chances are it will be a little bit lighter than the colour you were thinking of. So if we just take a, a brushful here of the blue and just pop that in, I'm hoping that will make it a little bit more blueified. And when it dries, we'll be a bit more like it. So there we go, that's out of the way. Move these and we'll just have a look, see what we've got. We'll see, we know the grey blue is going to come through first. And I'm not that unhappy with that. What we'll do, we're going to do these fusel large halves first. So if we just pop this in here, move that one out of the way. We'll just do in here so we can see what type of blue we've got. Is it the right type of blue? And I'm not totally unhappy with that. As I say, it's never going to be the same as the actual the ones we get in there, but it's certainly a bit better than the grey colour. When you look at the reference photos, this is far too light a blue. It's a darker blue-grey, um, something more like that. So we just do the other side as well. That's done. Okay, so then we can just do the tub itself. Is that done? And we'll just do the seat. Two things to do in the seat, it'll act like a primer and um, the other areas where we're not actually spraying. Because what we'll do, we'll be hand painting. I'll see, that's quite nice. So we'll just stick that to one side to dry. Okay, so we've got the PE parts on the go now. Now it's important when you're cutting them out to make sure you keep them flat. That's why I don't actually like to use a knife because if you're using a knife on a cutting mat, they tend to sink, you get a slight curve, they don't like them to push down. So what I like to do is literally just come along with some of my normal sort of cutting out scissors and just nip off very lightly the corners. And then by snipping them just very, very lightly off like this, you can sort of get it out without any breaking and without any little tabs as well. Something like that. And then that way, they're very easy to fit. Because as soon as they start to bend and things like that, you get all sorts of trouble. So as you might be able to see on this one here, we've already got some of the, the actual um, ones put on. So we've actually gone on this side, it's all sorted out. Very straightforward. Just remember with this particular kit, you've got two different versions of it. So make sure you have the right fret parts and the panels just look slightly different. Two ways of putting it on. Obviously you've got your good old sort of super glue like this, or you can actually use something like a gator glue, um, which is very handy. Depending on which way I'm going with these will depend on which way I actually do it. Straightforward flat parts going on, I'll use a super glue. Um, if it's anything else and it's a bit complicated, especially laminate layers together then I'll use a gator glue. So if I just show you roughly what we're doing here, so if we just grab a, got a bit of the glue, then all we do, this is the super glue, we just put that up the edge, and you don't want too much, less is best with it, most definitely, and then I wet my finger, okay, and then obviously with this one it has a little bit of a bend on the side as it goes down, so what we do is we're just going to put our snips these are our tamiya pe ones so you can hold it just like that and then we just give it a bit of a push and over it goes so then what we do we can then come along just make that a little bit more 
just to make it a bit stronger and then this one will then just sit on the top like so. So I'm just going to make sure that that's all in correctly and it's sitting in the right position so we just move this round a little bit. Quite tricky to line this one all up, but there we go. That's that one in on the top there. So we give a bit of a push down to make sure it's all in okay, like so. Then we can let that dry off for a moment, and then we can come back and stick a few other parts on it. At the same time, obviously, what we've got is the instrument panel itself. Now, there we go. If we just look it, we can get it to stick. This is our bottom part here. So for this we're going to use some gator glue, so what we'll do is we'll just cocktail stick again, that's great for doing this type of things. Okay now the bottom has to have a little bend in it which is ideal because it gives us something to hold on to. So we just do that and we get ourselves some spring loaded clamps. We can go on the bottom and then what we can do is we can get a bit of gator glue on a cocktail stick okay and we can just push this right the way over the entire thing two things that are the reason for doing it all everywhere one obviously we get a good bond secondly when it dries it will give us a nice glassy look now obviously we don't want to have too much on there so i'm just taking a bit off by using the rest of the cocktail stick to do that okay and then we just grab our other part okay and then we can just sit this right on the top just like that and just push it gently into position and then as obviously we can't see any black but the instruments all showing through we know we're in the right place just like so and then what you can do is you can get a cotton bud something like this just normal cotton bud and then moisten it just a little bit and just gently roll it over and it will push it down and any excess glue should get pushed out. Just give it a bit of a dab in those bigger dials and we can just manoeuvre it into position. So there we go, it's just done that. So we can add a few other bits to that when it's totally dry. So we're going to let that dry off, then we can put the other bits in and then obviously this one will fit very straightforward just in like so into the actual front part of the cockpit there finishing off the cockpit so we just put that to one side the other thing we've been doing as well is that we've been doing the seat and painting it up so we've painted the back of the seat up black obviously we're doing it in stages then we can do the cushions uh, and all the other bits and then in a minute i'll show you a little bit of dry brushing um, to really bring it to life and then we can get the harnesses fitted okay so as you can see here we've got the uh, main seat done um, we've basically attached all the harnesses and the various bits and pieces. I used a bit of PE glue, just took my time, put one end in and worked my way through that. It's a very long, laborious job, but it's no different from really doing anything like this type of work here on the cockpit. Now what we want to do now is just generally liven it up and give it a bit of weathering and a bit of depth. Now the quickest way to do that, to be honest, is with a little bit of silver paint. Um, I've got some Citadels here. This is their Gumbolt Metal. Uh, the reason I like this stuff really is because it's got very very small pigment areas so we just get a bit on a brush like this over to a clean paper towel and just rub it all off and with because we're on such a small scale you really want it all off because it will be magnified a thousand times so if we come over to the seat I've got the seat part like this and then all we're going to do is just gently give it a brush over now the thing is if you were to be doing this with uh, Tamiya's you get little flicks of paint here and things like that yeah with this stuff you don't get it and it gives you a very nice sort of little silvery bits and just gives that effect of being warm the thing is you do need to refill your brush quite a bit okay most of it all off onto the other side and say very light flicky movements if we just move these out of the way there we go very light slightly flicky movements and just gently give you a bit of a rub all over and obviously on the metal work it will show more. It's great, just back on this other side around these hoses and things. And it will just obviously highlight the little rivets and we'll just do it around here at the top because it will highlight hoses 
and things just a little bit over everywhere and there we go that's the seat all nicely weathered in just like that and we're going to do the same for the cockpit we're going to pick out some areas around the floor so what we do we just put a little bit more on obviously a little bit more paint this time because it's going to be a scuffy type of effect okay and then all we do is literally round where these feet areas go anywhere where the feet would get in there and scrape you can have a little go just like that and it just gives that effect of being worn through paint so there we go that's that bit done so really that's taking care of the the copper area itself and then obviously you can use um, normal super glues we've got here a little bit going a bit thick here which is quite nice for this type of thing so we just put a drop on the bottom and we can bring it along to the cockpit area okay and then obviously we just sit it in and there we go that gives us our cockpit just like that looking very very nice obviously with those scuffy bits and then just for the moment just to see what it's like we can pop our seat in and that gives us our type of view just like that so there we go that's the the seat cockpit done and to be honest that's quite a lot of the work out of the way now it's a long time fiddly obviously i didn't show it all because it it's just going around putting those harnesses and the seats in it does take a bit of time but there we go we can leave that to one side now to basically all dry off and then what we can do is clean that away um, the next thing that we're going to move on to now is basically setting up all the little bits and pieces um, so what we've got i've got two intake halves just like this super glue them super glue those together and then um, what we've actually done it's given a little bit of sand just for things you're not really going to see it because you've got a part that's going to go right in the middle now there's a gap at the nose wheel that's supposed to be there because there's a little tab um, for this center section the shock cone where the radar is um, that's going to fit in that little gap so don't worry about that too much now the thing is um, looking at again you've got more pe uh, photo etch parts can go inside here so if you want to get those in you can if you haven't got the pe don't worry about it but what you're going to do you're basically going to have these two parts together and then um, inside here we want to fill this with some type of weight now you could put a, a bolt in there um, some fishing weights a bit of lead um, as i've got some steel shot you pop that in a bit of super glue and it all just locks it all together again okay? because we need the weight because unfortunately the lightning is a notorious tail sitter so without it what's going to happen is it's actually going to then just basically sit back onto its tail with a nose wheel in the air and we obviously don't want that to happen so what we're going to do now we're going to get some lead weight into there then once that's all in we've got the nose section and the nose will just fit on fill that up with lead as well or whatever it is so it's a nice heavy piece and then we can get that inserted